Hey everyone, Guillaume here, and in today's video we'll be looking at the Bushnell Legacy Waterproof 10x50s, which is a fantastic pair of binoculars for bird watching. Coming right up. So, before we look at this particular model, um, it's important to, to understand how binoculars work. So, so um, in front of any pair of binoculars, you're going to find a number. So, for example, in this case, you have 10 by 50. Um, these numbers are really important to consider, right? So, the, the, the 10 it, uh, refers to the magnification of the binoculars. So, um, that essentially means that you're seeing the object 10 times closer um, than you are in real life. So that, that just refers to how, how, how big the object is going to appear um, in, in the binoculars. The second number, 50, is the diameter of the objective lens, which is this lens, the bigger one, that's, close, that's the closest to the object you're going to be looking at. And that, uh, that determines how much light is going to enter into the binoculars, so um, it's, it's important to consider that. And the higher the magnification that you have, so the 10, 10 times, the higher that is, the the uh, the narrower the field of view is going to be, right? Because you you're zooming in more on on a particular object, so you have less field of view. It's a pretty interesting thing to explore, and for bird watchers, it's generally good to have a good balance between the field of view and the magnification, because you don't want to be too too narrowly focused into something that you can't have a decent field of view. But likewise, you don't want to have a huge field of view and not zoom in on the details. So it's it's a, it's a balance, and it's a question of personal preference as well. But um, but it all comes down to, to what you to what you're after. So that that's for the Bushnells 10 by 50. You can also get different variants of this. For example, uh, from Carson, I have these smaller ones, um, which which have the same magnification. So they're 10 by 34. You have the 10. So you're looking at the object as closely as you are with the Bushnells except that the objective lens diameter is a little bit smaller, so it doesn't let quite as much light in. So, so you have different variants, in, and of course it depends on your budget and on what type of binoculars you're looking for. An important aspect as well is the, uh, the exit pupil diameter, which is when you hold up your binoculars to, to the light, you, you generally see, you're going to see a, a, little, a little circumference, a little circle of light. And that diameter is important for low light conditions, uh, like for, for analyzing no, low light conditions. It's quite technical and I'll put something up on the screen for you to, to check out and some links in the description, but um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really um, complete kind of sphere of, uh, of ornithology and, uh, and, and particularly field, field work and, and birding when you're out um, birding. So, um. so when you have these two binoculars side by side, you can see that they're different in shape, right? And that's due to the to the prism style of each binocular. So this one here, the Carson, the smaller Carson, is a is known as a roof prism. So it's got an essentially straight design, um, which goes from up to down and with no bends or anything. So um, that's a relatively modern um, style of binocular, which is which came later than the Bushnells. The Bushnells are known as a um, as a as a poro prism. So so the, the angles of the, of the light coming in, it bounces around a bit, and it's a little bit technical again, so I can put up this diagram for you, um, and you can explore more with the links in the description, but it's, a, it's quite an interesting art to, uh, to explore, um, and you have lots of different styles, um, and you can, you can get good binoculars in either. Uh, the, the, the top of the range are usually the roof prisms, Swarovski, Leica, Zeiss, all of those ones. Carson as well is quite good. I find. But um, I've had these since 2016, so it's been four years, and they've lasted me a long time, and they, they're, they're durable, they're waterproof, which is fantastic um, when you go out in the field, um, especially in places like the tropics or when it's, when it's the winter, when there's more hum humidity in the air. And so yeah, good, good option. Another good thing about the Bushnells is that uh, th their lenses are multi-coated, which increases the image quality. Um, so that's that's a good thing to look out for when you're buying binoculars is to make sure the lenses are of good quality. They're quite heavy, and that's generally speaking with the poro prisms that the the weight is generally higher um, because they require more material to make them. 
Um, but for me it's worth it because the image quality is fine and they're very affordable. I, got, I don't remember exactly how much I got these for, but they're affordable and they're, they're much cheaper than the higher range options. Um, so if you're on a budget, they're a, a, good, a good choice. For example, the Carsons as well are quite cheap, um, but like I said, the objective lens is a bit smaller, so, so you, you have less light coming in. And one thing that I don't quite like about these is that the, the closest you can focus to, so when you have an object that's quite close or a bird that's in the bushes right in front of you, the, the closest you can focus to is 3.6 meters according to the specifications on the Bushnell website. And that's okay, except that sometimes you really have to kind of, it's right at the limit of, of, of what you can do with the focus. Uh, for example, the Carsons, you can, you can zoom in much closer and, and the, focal, the closest focal um, distance that you get with these is, is, is much smaller, so you can focus on things that are quite, quite close. And that's not the case with these. But all in all, they're a fantastic option, and uh, they're durable, and they're waterproof as well. Um, and for me, they've lasted a long time, and I think I'm going to keep using them, although I, I am thinking of getting a new pair sooner rather than later, let's, let's put it that way. But they're, 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 they're definitely efficient and, um, and a good option for any birder, uh, whether you're considering to start out or if you're looking for an upgrade. I reckon that they're, they're a good choice. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it was a bit of a short video. I wanted to put something together because actually it's the last day of um, it's the last day of obligatory quarantine here in the commune of Huachuda in Santiago, and so tomorrow we'll be hitting the hills and and going outside, and I'll be filming some more birds um, for my channel. And you can check that out in my Birds of the World playlist uh, up here. I'll put a link. And uh, yeah, so might not see you for a while, but um, I will keep you posted and. Um, I will see you soon. Cheers for birding today. Over and out.